In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the difference between the watch function and the observe function in AngularJS. Through the watch function and the observe function, uh, Angular provides us a mechanism by which we can observe values on the model and then update the UI in response to their changes. Now, in order to make use of these functions, we of course have to include AngularJS in our web page, as I have done here. You can reference it from a popular CDN or you can download it to your local web application and reference it from there. Now I have the basic scaffolding here of a very simple Angular web application. I have my ng app and my ng controller. And then down here I actually define my application module as well as my controller. Now probably the best way to take a look at this is actually to construct an actual watch and then compare it to an observe. And we're going to see that when watches execute, they actually execute two functions. One is an actual comparison function to, to determine whether or not the value has changed. And the uh, second function is the actual watch function that will execute if the value has in fact changed. And then we're going to see with observes that only one function is executed. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a watch. Dollar sign scope dot dollar sign watch. We're going to pass in a function here, and then we're going to pass in a second function. Now, this first function is the comparison function, and it passes in an, a parameter, which is going to be the actual scope. And then this function is the actual watch function that will execute if the value changes. So we have the new value and the old value. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to output console.log, we'll say watch colon, then we'll say checking for new message value. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a watch on this message property here. And then after two seconds, that message property is going to change. And then we're going to see how the watch outputs that to the screen here. Return the scope.message. And then down here, we're going to say console.log watch. And then we'll say new. And we'll have new value. And then we'll have our old value. So now if we save this and run it, we're going to see when we reload our page here, we have our checking for new message, new value, old value. Now you'll notice it runs checking for new message again. That's just basically checking to make sure it wasn't changed on a previous iteration of the digest loop. And then after the two seconds, we'll see where it checks for new message again. There was a change from new to old, or from old to new, and then now we can see that we're once again, doing another check to see if in fact it changed, which it didn't, so the digest loop process stops running. Now, as you can see, in order to do a simple change, we actually had to run the two functions. We had to run the function which did the check, and we also had to run the function which actually did the operation that we wanted to run if the value in fact changed. Now, if we come back over here to our code, you're going to notice down here that I've created a directive. And we'll uncomment this directive here real quick. And this directive essentially returns only a link function. And we're going to see here that it has, uh, it's using the observe function, which is provided on the attributes object. And what we're going to have it do is we're going to put this directive up here on this div element. So we're going to say my dash dir. And then for our observation, we're going to observe, uh, observe the message property as an interpolated string. Now down here, whenever this interpolated string that's been assigned to this attribute myDir changes, we're actually going to have it output the new value to the console. So we'll come up here and we'll reload our page. And let's observe the output. Now notice on the initial run, in addition to running the watch, it also ran the observe. And then down here, when it ran again, it also ran the observe. So the observe is basically paying attention to the interpolated expression. That is the expression in the double curly braces um, and looking to see if it has in fact changed.
Now, observes are more efficient than watches because only one function executes. The actual function here, that's, that, that's been passed into the observe. Whereas with a watch, two functions have to be executed. In fact, if you go and review the Angular source code, it will tell you that it is better to have many observes and fewer watches. And that's because of the number of functions that have to execute in order to detect and respond to a value change.